Hi guys, today I'm going to be talking about the five types of paintbrush that I find the most useful. And I'm going to be doing a demonstration painting so you can see exactly how I'm using each brush. I'm going to be painting with watercolours, but most of these techniques can easily be applied to other paints like oils and acrylics. This video will be useful to people who might be looking for different kinds of brushes to buy, or people who are just starting out and want to know what they'll need if they want a versatile set of brushes. The first brush that I use is this large round mop brush or wash brush. It's super absorbent and it picks up loads of water which makes it so much quicker to do loose washes of water. I also use it for doing very loose wet and wet painting for when I want the colours to smoothly blend into each other. And it's for that reason that this brush is ideal for clouds because you get this lovely soft textured blend of colours in such a short amount of time. My only issue with this brush is that it's so large it makes it difficult when you want to work on a smaller scale. And smaller versions of this brush type are extremely difficult to find. Which leads me on to my next brush. This is the brush that I use as a makeshift mop brush for working on a smaller scale. I call it the straggled brush because it's one of those very cheap, very untidy and imprecise brushes. I've got a few of these I've hung on to for years, and they're basically scrap brushes that I haven't thrown away yet. They absorb a fair amount of water for their size, and there's no way you can paint in detail with these because they're so limp, and while the brush might have once had a point, it certainly doesn't anymore. I like to use these kind of brushes for adding smaller light washes that I can't get with the mop brush. And if you work wet on wet, which is how I'm adding the slightly darker sections to the clouds, then it allows you to start adding slightly more refined sections. I am also using this brush to paint the top of these mountains in the background. I wanted these to fade into the background and I wasn't bothered about how precise the outlines of them were. And the interesting thing about these kinds of brushes is that they surprise you with how little control you have over them. So if you're really into super controlled, tight, realistic paintings, then it's probably not the brush for you. But if you don't mind not quite knowing how something will turn out, or letting something just do its thing, then you might want to try using a brush like this for certain sections. You can also get quite a few interesting textures with this brush, if you let the paint dry a little, and this is how I'm starting to add some very loose detail to the mountains in the background. The next brush I'm using is the details brush. It's probably the type of brush you already have in your house and they come in loads of different sizes but they have this sharp pointed tip that really gives you that control to go in and add details precisely where you want them. This is the kind of brush that I slow down to use so I can give myself the time to get everything right. I'm working background to foreground so I'm adding final details to the mountains in the background and then I'll be using this brush again to add details in and over the top of the foreground. I'm also going back in with the straggled brush to paint the hills and give them a bit of that fuzzy texture and while the paint's still slightly wet I'm painting in some trees in the distance with my details brush. Because the paint's still damp it lets the trees blend out a bit and this lack of a sharp contrast gives them the illusion of being more far away. After the paint's dried more, I'm then adding a few more trees, so it won't be blended as much, it just gives it some variation and it makes it look like some trees are further forward than others. I'm going to be talking about the flat brush next. It's great for doing washes of colour where you want a crisp clean edge, and that's why I'm using it to paint the lake. It's also good for smooth blending, and I'm painting and blending just going side to side, and the texture to form from doing that will really help it make it look like water. I'm refining the shoreline with my details brush, and then I'm overlaying and mixing in other shades of blue and grey with the flat brush. The final brush I'm going to talk about is the fan brush. And there are quite a few specific things that the way that all the hairs on this brush are splayed out allows you to do. The first is creating lots of thin lines on the water, and I'm doing that by just gently dragging my brush over the surface of the paper. I'm then softly blending these little lines by using the fan brush, again going side to side, which makes these marks look like tiny waves or ripples in the surface of the water. The second thing that I'm doing once the whole thing is dried is after I've painted the trunk of the tree with my details brush I'm then using this technique that's been most popularized by Bob Ross and you need to paint and the paint on your brush needs to be not too diluted and you just make this dabbing motion that zigzags from the top of the tree to the bottom of the tree. 
As you get to the bottom of the tree, you make the zigzags wider, and it's really good for coniferous trees. The third is that the fan brushes are really good for painting grass. You don't have to bother painting each individual blade. I started off with my brush on the tape at the bottom of the painting, then I just flicked up and it makes it look like the grass blades are growing upwards. Then for my final touches, I went back over and painted stuff like the reeds with my details brush, then I took the tape off so I could refine some of the edges before I called this painting complete. Prints of this painting are available in my Society6 store, which I'll link in the description. And I hope you found this video useful for those of you who are looking for brushes or different ways to use the brushes you already have. That's all for now, and I'll see you guys next time.